Thank you for listening to Trekker Talk, a fan podcast devoted to the adventures of 23rd century bounty hunter Mercy St. Clair from the pages of Trekker Comics by creator, writer, and artist Ron Randall. I'm Ruth. And I'm Darren. And thank you all for coming back for another episode. Just a reminder that this is a fan podcast and the opinions expressed are just ours. Please consider visiting trekkercomic.com. That's Ron Randall's official site dedicated to Mercy St. Clair. It features a new page of Trekker material every Monday, where the Volstock payoff storyline is currently running. It's a dark and moody noir mystery set in the back streets and tunnels of New Gallif. Also at the Trekker Comic website, you'll find interesting posts on Thursdays. That's where Ron Randall often shares inspirations and insights into how he creates comics. Recently, he shared a post about the influence of Al Williamson's Flash Gordon on his career in general, and Trekker in particular. It is a fun read with lots of great pictures from Al Williamson's work. You will also find links to all the ways to follow Ron Randall on social media, including links for Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and of course his Patreon page, where you have the option to donate to help support the creation of brand new Trekker material. During this podcast, we'll sometimes refer to page numbers related to the story, especially when we're taking a closer look at the art. Trekker has been published in many formats over the years, including issues of a solo series, specials, and multi-part stories in the anthology series Dark Horse Presents. For our references, we use page numbers from the Trekker Omnibus. This is a collection that was published in 2013, and it includes all of the Trekker material up to that point in time. We selected the Trekker Omnibus since it is easily available and can often be found at a good price. It is available in print in a graphic novel collection, or you can get a digital copy from Comixology, the Dark Horse Comics app, as well as from the Amazon Kindle store. If you do happen to own the books on any of the digital platforms, please consider taking a moment to rate the books. By doing so, you may help encourage new readers to give the books a try. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the story Chinks, as in Chinks in the Armor, which was featured in issue 22 of Dark Horse Presents. And later in the episode, we'll share some of the great comments and feedback we've received since last time. If you've heard this show before, I'm sure you've heard me say the show is more fun for everyone when we get to hear from you. I know it's true. We really enjoy sharing the comments we receive. So when you get a chance, please write in and let us know what you think about Trekker. Who are your favorite characters? What are your favorite scenes? What do you like best about the world of Trekker? I'd like to know. And feel free to point out anything we missed and share additional points of view on any aspect of the books. So listen at the end of the episode for ways to contact us, and we'll be sure to include your comments in a future episode. Plus, when we were at Baltimore Comic Con, we got four color prints of Trekker Mercy St. Clair autographed by Ron Randall. We gave one of those away last time, and we'll be giving another away later in this episode. So listen later in the show to learn how to enter to win one of the remaining autographed prints. Chinks is an eight-page story that was published in Dark Horse Presents, issue number 22, which had a cover date of September 1988. The story appears in the Trekker Omnibus from pages 209 to 218. The story is in black and white and is written by Ron Randall with letters by Ken Brusnack. You will notice that we didn't say it's illustrated by Ron Randall as usual, and that's because while this issue has layouts by Ron Randall, it is drawn by Dave Dorman. The cover of this issue is also by Dave Dorman. As we mentioned when we covered Part 2 of the Babel Canon, this drawing was originally featured as the cover to Issue 6 of Trekker, but was appropriately moved to the cover of this story since it's also drawn by Dave Dorman. The cover has Mercy with her back to the reader. Her head is turned, looking over her shoulder. She's holding one of her weapons in her left hand. Our story opens in the dining room of a Starliner. Mercy is on the return trip from Gamma 7 back to Earth. She's still distraught about the death of Roger Vincent, and feeling a sense of guilt that her involvement could have contributed to his death in some way. She's realizing she's been a trekker so long that it's now part of her everyday life, as she stares at the waiter serving her and begins to formulate theories based upon his clothing and demeanor. Walking back to her room, Mercy thinks about how she can't ever let her guard down, and she can't ever trust anyone. This makes her think about her best friend Molly, who she thinks trusts everyone too much, but who seems to live a charmed life. Back on New Gallif, Molly is working at her music shop and happy that the latest instrument she just sold will help her keep her shop open a little longer. As she leaves her shop, she's happy to know she has just enough change for a tube ride to Mercy's so she can feed Scuff when a local woman runs up to her needing change for a tube ride as well. 
Molly selflessly hands over her change and starts a 23-block walk to Mercy's apartment. Back on the Starliner, Mercy is thinking about her father. She wishes he had been more like his brother, her uncle Alex, who is tough and steady and able to deal with the corruption in the police department. In New Gellif, Alex St. Clair is arriving at a crime scene. He knows that since the call took so long to get to him that any evidence will have already been removed before he arrives. One of the dead bodies at the scene is Beef Statler, a trekker, which makes him think that one of these days that could be Mercy. Alex thinks back just a few years to when the police department cleaned up this area, and there wasn't a need for professional bounty hunters, but those days are long past now. On the Starliner, Mercy is thinking about Paul and how difficult she made it for him on the Venusian cruise. She knows those tickets must have cost several weeks' worth of his salary, but she believes all she did was deepen the rift between them. Paul is at Rico's Flash Disc Lanes Gaming Hall with some friends and co-workers. The game looks like a cross between a bowling alley and a shooting range. He's missing Mercy, and contrary to her expectations, his feelings about her are even stronger than before. But he's feeling a little insecure, as he wonders if Mercy will be more interested in a hotshot Rigel agent like Jason Bolt. On the Starliner, Mercy can't sleep. The soft sheets and spotlessly clean cabin don't suit her. She's not from this pristine world and is more at home in the corrosion of New Gellif. She can't wait to get back to Earth and put on her armor and strap on her guns. This story also has the subtitle Interlude 1, which is very appropriate. In some respects, it feels like an epilogue to the recent stories culminating in Vincent's share, but Interlude is more appropriate because it also bridges nicely into the upcoming stories in the series. This is definitely a character-driven story, There really isn't any action in the story. Instead, we get small slice-of-life interludes with major characters Mercy, Molly, Paul, and Uncle Alex. Mercy is still reeling from Vincent's death and her feelings of whether her involvement might have contributed to it in some way. She's also lost in her feelings for Paul and Molly, and she's having unkind thoughts about her father and wishing he had been more like her Uncle Alex. Mercy is also feeling guilty about how she treated Paul on the Venusian cruise, knowing that the tickets must have cost him lots of money and she didn't have to make it so difficult. Meanwhile, Paul is missing Mercy terribly, and even though the Venusian cruise didn't go the way he hoped, his feelings for Mercy are even stronger now. As always, Molly is lovable and optimistic, running her music shop, barely able to pay the bills, giving away her tube fare to a needy friend, and then walking 23 blocks to feed Scuff while Mercy is away. Our characters all seem to be in a rut. None of them are where they want to be. Some of them realize it, and some of them don't. It's very realistic, and a bit melancholy, of course, an example of why we love this series so much. One minute the pages are filled with action and adventure, and the next moment we pause for some character focus that is always genuine and believable. But now we must talk about the art. Dave Dorman is a well-known and well-respected artist, most famous for his Star Wars art, which is quite stunning. However, I must say that just as Ron Randall writes perfect Trekker stories, he also draws perfect Trekker stories. We've heard him talk about his love for adventure comics like Flash Gordon, Tarzan, and The Spirit, and in Trekker he created a series that in our opinion is equal to those in both story and art. You can see his love for the material in every Trekker drawing. So having someone else draw Trekker, even someone who is a great artist, is a little difficult because you're left feeling you're only getting half the Trekker experience, and that's the way I feel about this story. However, there are some great pages and panels, so let's talk about our favorites. Page 211 and 212 feature Mercy dining and then walking back to her room, and there's a particularly nice portrait-style drawing of her at the top of page 212. And then page 213 shows us Molly at her music shop. Then the next couple of pages have Uncle Alex at a crime scene, and there's a nice drawing of him standing beside the police cruiser with other officers in the background. The scene captures the dirty depression of New Gallif Well. Then we get a couple of pages of Paul hanging out with his friends and co-workers at Rico's Flash Disc Lanes, and there's a nice portrait of Paul at the bottom corner of page 216. Then our story wraps up with Mercy in her room on the trip back to Earth, and there's a nice view of the ship traveling through space in the last panel of the story. It's time for Who's Who when we talk about significant characters from the stories and get to know them a little better. We don't look ahead because we don't want to spoil the stories for anyone reading them for the first time. That means we'll revisit characters over time as we learn more things about them. Mercy St. Clair is a bounty hunter known as a trekker. She lives in Antari Alley, which is a bad part of New Gallif. 
She spends most of her money on weapons for her job and food for her pet scuff, which is a dox and is a cross between a dog and a fox. Lately, we've been getting a few hints about her father's past. Alex St. Clair is Mercy's uncle and a lieutenant in the police force. The police and Trekkers don't generally like each other, but these two definitely care for each other and sometimes collaborate on cases. Molly Sundowner is a local shopkeeper and Mercy's best friend. She takes care of Scuff when Mercy is away and is generous to a fault. Paul Clemens is a police officer who works in the same precinct as Uncle Alex. Paul is trying to build a relationship with Mercy. He recently convinced her to go on the Venusian tour, but it didn't go quite as he hoped. Next up is Trekker Transmissions, where we share the listener feedback we've received since last time. Thanks for all of the comments and feedback since last episode. Plus, we got a couple of new iTunes reviews thanks to Professor Allen and Jeff Messer. Professor Allen wrote, I love this show. They do a great job of talking about these underread comics. So glad that I can follow along with the stories now. Keep up the great work, you two. Jeff Messer wrote that he loves the passion of true fans. This is the sort of podcast I love to hear and know is out there. This is what podcasting is all about. Fans with passion sharing their love of something. I look forward to getting you on my Geek Brain Popcast podcast soon. That sounds like fun, Jeff. Ed Moore won the contest drawing last episode, and he selected the St. Clair and the Dragon print as his prize. When it arrived, he wrote in to say it was awesome. And we agree, Ed, it's an awesome print. Between the Pages appreciates our focus on a specific artist, thinking it will help increase awareness of him, and commented that Ron Randall deserves a big fan base. Ruth Reese has become a big promoter of Ron Randall and Trekker, and she wrote to say she really enjoys the whole Trekker world. We agree. Ron Randall has created a fantastic world for Trekker. Kyle Benning says he absolutely loves the show and that it's incredibly well-produced. I'll give Darren all the credit on the editing and post-production. He spends many long hours at that. John Baker posed a great question to Ron Randall through Twitter. John asked, if Mercy were to make it to the big screen, who would you want to see playing the part? Ron's quick reply was Katie Sackhoff, saying she has always seemed a perfect fit, and he gave credit to his comics colleague Carl Kessel for thinking of it first. We agree completely. Katie Sackhoff was great in Battlestar Galactica and is equally great in the current Longmire mystery series that we're also fans of. It would be fantastic to see a Trekker movie or series featuring her in the role. Ron Randall posted a photo from the Sherlock Holmes film Murder by Decree on his Twitter. It led to a great conversation with Ruth Reese that we were able to join, and the discussions expanded to talking about other great actors who have played Holmes over the years. Jeremy Brett is our favorite Holmes, while Brian really likes the great Basil Rathbone. Dr. G and John Baker joined in on the exchange as well. It was great to see how many Trekker fans are also fans of Sherlock Holmes. We got some nice notes specifically about our last episode where we covered the Ron Randall Supergirl Way of the World issues. Our friend Chris DC let us know that Supergirl is one of his favorite DC characters, though he wished DC would stop changing her origin and persona so much. And Chris Mounts wrote to say he loved the Supergirl episode. And sent us a letter saying, Great review of the Ron Randall Supergirl issues. It was an interesting time for the patient. The earliest issues of that title had sort of an angsty, bitter, over-sexualized Supergirl being mean to everyone. Then Kelly Puckett came on and tried to semi-rehabilitate her. In this story, it is clear she wants to be a hero, albeit writ small, She wants to be a hero to this one kid, Thomas. Overall, it is a very good story about the limitations of superpowers. It is a lesson for Kara that she has to embrace her role of hero in a different way, and she learns that abusing your power to try to do good usually means you end up doing evil. I mean, she frees a supervillain in this arc. All sorts of things could go wrong. After the Ian Churchill, L. Garza issues, the tag team of Drew Johnson and Ron Randall was a much better, less raunchy style of art. In particular, the Randall issues show a powerful Supergirl. There's a great kinetic feel to the art there, and I love the costume he designed for the older Supergirl. That sort of full dress, more mature look to the costume was great, and the red shoulders harkened back to the pre-crisis headband look. Ange does an amazing Supergirl blog called Comic Box Commentary. He has great coverage on all aspects of Supergirl on his site. We'll post a link to the blog in our show notes. And thanks to Ange for the kind shout-out on his blog recently, mentioning our discussion of Ron Randall's run on Supergirl comics and including links to our contact information. Thanks, Ange. Joe Crawford also liked our coverage of the Supergirl comics. 
He said he has a fondness for Kara, and these issues seem well worth seeking out. I always liked how even though at times she seemed more alien than her cousin, her flaws also make her more human. That's a really interesting observation, Joe. Thanks for sharing it with us. Between the Pages also enjoyed the Supergirl episode and wrote to suggest that in December we should do an episode about Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire, Evolution, which are their favorite Star Wars comics. We wrote back to tell Between the Pages they must be psychic because that was already our plan. Ron Randall worked on those issues and it seems a perfect time to cover the miniseries with the new Star Wars movie coming out. So look for that Star Wars themed Trekker Talk episode in a few weeks. Between the Pages is both a Twitter handle and also the name of a terrific blog. The full name of the blog is Between the Pages, Where Food and Pop Culture Meet. Since I enjoy cooking art and pop culture, I'm regularly fascinated by the photos of art incorporated into food, most often cakes, but cookies and candies show up as well. Recently on the Twitter feed, there was an incredible Doctor Who TARDIS cake and an awesome classic Star Wars at-at. You really must see the photos to fully appreciate them, so check out Between the Pages Twitter feed and blog. Joe Crawford also let us know that he didn't mean to, but he finished reading the Trekker Omnibus. He explains, I was only going to read one story, but Sins of the Father was so good I couldn't stop. We can't blame him because Sins of the Father is a great story, and it's next in sequence, so you'll all know just how good it is in the near future. Also, if you go over to the Trekker Talk Facebook page, you can read a great series of comments sparked by Joe's question. Do you prefer the color or black and white stories? There is a discussion of Ron's art, favorite stories, and Ron Randall even chimed in as well. In response to Joe's question, I wrote, Since the original series was in black and white, that's often how I think of Trekker. Plus, I think the black and white presentation really shows off Ron Randall's gorgeous pencils and inks. However, Trekker in color is amazing. Whether Ron's working with the excellent Jeremy Colwell or the fabulous Cat Ferris or doing the colors on his own, I must say that color always makes Trekker pop. It always seems that just the right color palette is used for every story. I think the current Volstock payoff story is a prime example. It doesn't look like any other Trekker story, but it looks fantastic. So I know it isn't an answer, but I can't decide. I just love them all. Joe Crawford then responded, saying, I think that is what I like best about the black and white, that you can really appreciate the line work and shading. Then amazingly, Ron Randall wrote in, saying, I love this exchange, you guys. I have always loved seeing my favorite artist's work in black and white, of course. I also know that the right color does add something to the work of even such masters as Hal Foster, Al Williamson, and my other idols. I don't think there's a right answer here. I do know I'm glad the Omnibus has some stories in color and some in black and white for that very reason. And Joe, I've always been particularly proud of Sins and Trial by Fire for the very reasons you state here. We're on the same page. And as I've mentioned before, Scarman's Burn is also another early favorite of mine, and one where I feel I got a good amount of the twists and turns into the chase story. I would love to have seen some desert colors added to those wasteland scenes, but then we do get something like that in the Avalon Bay story, so maybe everybody wins. A big thank you to Joe for asking such insightful questions, and a huge thanks to Ron Randall for sharing his excellent comments. Be sure and check out our Trekker Talk Facebook page to read the entire conversation. We want to extend our Trekker thanks to everyone who supported us on social media since last episode. These are people who favorited or shared our tweets from at Trekker Talk or liked Facebook or Tumblr pages. Thanks to everyone who took the time to share news about Trekker Talk with others. Your support really helps draw attention to the show and best of all, helps others discover Trekker. So before we start, let us say if we miss a name, please let us know and we'll correct it in the next episode. And also forgive us if we mispronounce your name. Just email us and let us know and we'll be happy to correct that next episode as well. Aaron Berry, Aaron Scott, Aaron Usher. A-J-T-T-K, and please let me know if I'm supposed to be able to pronounce that. Andy Capellish, Ange of the Supergirl Comic Box Commentary Blog, Anna Charlingham, Aurea Berrios, Batman Sanctuary, Becky Jo Phillips, Berto, Between the Pages, Brian Mulvey, Carolyn Wallace, Chris Mounts, Cody Clements, Coffee and Comics Blog, Cullen Stapleton, Dave Cote, DC Comics Cult, Dean Kane, Superman himself, Destiny Childers, Diablo Frank of the Martian Manhunter blog, Idlehead of Diablo, Dr. Deary, Douglas Meacham, Dr. G. Nerdologist of the Pulped Pixel Podcasts, Ed and Terry Moore of Till Productions, Edgar Rice Burroughs Fan, Eli, The Film and Water Podcast, Thanks Rob, Firestorm Fan, Thanks Shag, Gene Hendricks of The Hammer Strikes, George Pelk, George Warner, Introverted Art, Jared West, Jay Mahone, 
J.C. Berrio, Jeff Messer of the Geek Brain Podcast, and colorist extraordinaire Jeremy Caldwell. Jimmy Bennett, Joa Alexander, Joe Crawford, John Baker, Kaya Blackman, Carmen Hamden, the amazing Carl Kessel, Laurie S. Sutton, former DC editor and our Dragon Con buddy, Linda Tranfeld, Lynn Cheek, Martin Gray of the Too Dangerous blog, Michael Chin, Michael Kelly, Mike Gillis, Munden's Bar, Once or Bat, Otfam Goon, Panels and Pizza, Paper Rocket Ship, the great team at Periscope Studio, Poisoned X Apples, Professor Allen of the Relatively Geeky Podcast Network, Ron Randall himself, Ruth Reese, Ryan Daly, a.k.a. Count Druncula of Flowers and Fishnets, Secret Origins, and Dead Botham Spies, She is Our Hero, Shirt Asaurus, Sonorousness, Stephen Whistler, Sin, The Kubert School, Taiho Wani, Tim Wallace of Court Industries, Timothy G. Kramer, Tony Klosowski, Taurus Alexis, Toy Lab, Ty Ains, Zoom, DC Comics. It's time for the Trekker Toast Award, where we recognize someone who has gone above and beyond in supporting Trekker Talk. This person regularly retweets and promotes our show, as well as doing original tweets and supporting Ron Randall and Trekker. He also runs an outstanding blog that takes a decidedly positive and thoughtful approach to reviews and critiques, and he has a unique seven-questions format that he uses for great interviews on his site. His blog is featured post about the Trekker comics, and he's featured Ron Randall in his Seven Questions interview series. So we lift our glasses and give a thankful Trekker toast to Timothy G. Kramer. Thank you so much, Timothy. We sincerely appreciate everything that you do to promote Trekker. You can find Timothy at the Provocative Praise Scrutinizing Superb Storytelling site. We'll include a link in our show notes. And we'll be back after we play some promos for comic-related podcasts you might enjoy. When you think of podcasts about religion, you probably think of this. But at least one religion podcast sounds more like this. I kick ass for the Lord. Dorkness to Light is a relatively geeky production in which Alan and Emily discuss topics of faith, religion, and spirituality. But we do so through the lens of pop culture, like movies, TV, and comic books, because we're nerds. Our primary focus will be on Christianity, because that's what we know best. But all religious content is on the table. Well, think about it, Scully, from vampirism to Catholicism. This is an occasional cast, to be recorded and released as the mood strikes, with topics ranging from in-depth reviews to personal rants about some small aspect of theology or church history, because we're theological nerds. If these topics interest you, check out Dorkness to Light, dot blogspot.com for our more regular content or darkness to light dot tumblr.com for our more irregular content memes and puns mostly my bad darkness to light often irreverent rarely sacrilegious and Water Podcast, a weekly show about movies old and new, hosted by obsessive movie nerd Rob Kelly and a rotating series of special guests. From sci-fi to horror, dramas to family films, comedies to adventure epics, we watch it all. The Film and Water Podcast is part of the Fire and Water family of podcasts, available weekly at fireandwaterpodcast.blogspot.com and on iTunes and Stitcher. It's time for What's Up, when we talk about other things going on outside of the world of Trekker. First, I must mention that since the last episode, both Ron Randall and Ruth have had birthdays, so I send out very happy birthday wishes to both of them. Thank you. You're sweet. (laughs) Also, I must mention that Scuff's likeness has been showing up everywhere lately. At Halloween, we saw a statue of a dachshund in someone's yard, and every few days it was dressed in different costumes. The costumes included a shark a devil, and a T-Rex, which we nicknamed T-Docs. 
Then we saw some sweaters at the local mall with a cute docks on the front. And I found the perfect gift bag with the docks on the front to use for Ruth's birthday present. And no, we refused to believe that these were all a fox. They were definitely a docks. We can tell the difference. That's right, we can. We've been very fortunate to have a couple of fabulous shows come to town recently. First, Monty Python's John Cleese and Eric Idle are currently on tour in the U.S. As they said in a recent interview we heard on the radio, they're only touring where it's warm, and luckily our area is usually still warm this time of year. So we were very happy they booked a show nearby at the Durham Performing Arts Center. The show was quite varied. At times, the two sat in chairs with a screen behind them displaying pictures to the audience. The two reminisced about their time at school and how the various members of Monty Python met, as well as what it was like to work on the TV series and the movies. At other times during the show, the two recreated some of their favorite skits from over the years. Part of the show was devoted to Eric Idle singing some of the many hilarious songs he's written over the years, and John Cleese joined him on stage to perform Always Look on the Bright Side of Life with the audience for the encore. Another part of the show we liked was actually when John Cleese came on to talk to the audience just after the intermission. During the intermission, we noticed there was an ad on screen for the Duke Lemur Center. And as the second half of the show started, John Cleese wanted to tell the audience that he took the opportunity to visit the Duke Lemur Center while he was in town. And he was so impressed with the facility that he wanted to encourage everyone in the audience to donate to the center to help protect these beautiful creatures. The Duke Lemur Center houses the largest group of lemurs outside of Madagascar, and the work they do at the center is all about protecting the animals from extinction. We've had the opportunity to visit the center as well, and it's amazing spending time with the lemurs. We'll post a couple of photos online. And then just this weekend, we were back at the Durham Performing Arts Center to see Richard Thompson. As I'm sure many of you remember from earlier episodes or from following him on social media, Ron Randall is a fan of British singer Richard Thompson. And as we learned in the past from listener Brian Mulvey, Ron Randall even named the character of Tom Richards in Trekker after the singer. For those of you who don't remember, Tom Richards is a history professor who lives in the same apartment building as Mercy St. Clair, and he gave her some valuable information back in the Scarman's Burn story. Besides Ron Randall being a fan, listener Brian Mulvey is also a big Richard Thompson fan, so we decided recommendations from those two respected gentlemen meant we shouldn't pass up the opportunity to see him since he was nearby, and we're very happy that we went. It was a fantastic show with lots of great music, a very nice time all around, and we're very happy that we went. <coughs> it's contest time. We're in the middle of a series of contests, and the prizes are color prints of Mercy St. Clair signed by Ron Randall that we picked up when we saw him at Baltimore Comic Con. The first contest encouraged listeners to create an original post promoting our show, whether it was on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, or any other social media outlet, and the winner of that contest was Ed Moore. For the second contest, we encouraged listeners to promote the new Trekker pages that Ron Randall releases each week. We've collected names of all those who participated, and we're going to have a drawing to determine the winner who will get to choose from among the three remaining prints. But before we do the drawing, let's go ahead and provide the details for the third contest. This time, we want listeners to promote Ron Randall on Twitter with Friday Follows tweets. So all you have to do is send out a tweet on a Friday promoting at Ron underscore Randall on Twitter using hashtag FF in your tweet. We don't want to miss including anyone in the drawing, so please send us a message to let us know when you've sent your tweet, and we'll reply back when we've added you to the drawing. So now let's have that drawing for our second contest winner. And Ruth, who is that winner? Okay, let's see who it is. John Baker. Hey, congratulations, John. We will contact you to see which of the three prints you want. We'll then post the pictures of the two remaining prints on our Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr pages. And our winner next episode will get to choose from among those. Good luck to everyone, and we hope you all enjoy the contest. Before we go, we want to provide our contact information. Please let us know your thoughts through email, Facebook, or Twitter. Also, if you like the show, please consider leaving a review on iTunes and Stitcher. Those are terrific ways to help get the show noticed and perhaps attract more listeners to grow Trekker fandom. And please consider subscribing to the show so you will always know when there's a new episode. We'd love to hear from you, so if you want to contact us directly, send us an email at trekkertalk at gmail.com. We're at facebook.com slash trekkertalk. On Twitter, we're at trekkertalk. And we're on Tumblr at trekkertalk.tumblr.com. You can also visit trekkertalk.com for links to all of our social media pages. Please use hashtag trekkertalk and hashtag trekkercomic in your messages to help other fans find and follow the conversation. 
For those of you interested in the music that Ron Randall listens to while working on Trekker, he uses the hashtag Trekker Soundtrack. If you have any other ideas for hashtags for Trekker or Mercy, let us know and we'll share them. Remember, at TrekkerComic.com, you'll find a new page every Monday, as well as links to all of the ways you can find Ron Randall, from Facebook to Twitter to Tumblr, and he often responds to posts on his Facebook page and on his Patreon site. So, post to his pages and let him and other fans know what you think of his new Trekker pages. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll come back next month for another new episode of Trekker Talk. Trekker Talk is not affiliated with Dark Horse Comics or Ron Randall. The views expressed on the show are solely ours. Music is taken from the album Royalty Free Music, Movies, and Videos from the Royalty Free Music Club. Sound effects are taken from the albums Space Weapons and Lasers and Hollywood Sound Effects Volume 4. We make no money from this podcast and no copyright infringement is intended. Music